other mystery, which we've touched upon before, I still don't understand how it's possible that Billy Gilmore tests positive for COVID. None of his teammates have to self-isolate, nope. but Ben Chilwell and Mason Mount do. This has had a serious knock-on effect because one of the things that I, I took it for granted, okay, Mount comes out of quarantine at midnight the day before the game, so 17 hours before kickoff. It's not like he's literally been in a box. He's been self-isolating, right? So he's had the opportunity to train in smaller groups with coaches, socially distanced, whatever. So I took it for granted that this dude's going to come straight into the lineup. But then so. the story in the media was, oh, you know, we have to check on his mental health because he's him. been separate from separated from the others. Um, it's a big concern. Are we serious? You can't. I don't think you can play him. Gabby. I mean, unless I un unless, unless he's exhibited signs that he's been affected by this. But it's not. He's trying on his own. For so a week. what's the problem? But, oh, so one, I tell you the problem. I would hope that in the last week, certainly after the Czech Republic game, Southgate has worked with the starting eleven for this Germany game. You think so? He didn't work with the starting eleven in the two in the two friendlies leading up to the tournament because he couldn't. Didn't seem to I affect. Know. I know, but but now we're talking Euros last sixteen against Germany at Wembley. Right. So I would really hope, especially if he changes this, the formation and go to a back three, that he's worked with those players, like every head coach does in the whole world, preparing for this game the days before the game, going, OK, this is... And they all do it. You play your starters against your subs for obvious reasons, to get them all together, to work on certain things. I think Mount's job, if he plays, I think he should play, is going to be the same job he had against Croatia in the opening game. You're going to go up... Ilkay Gundogan's backside and just press the life out of him wherever he goes. That's going to force Germany, hopefully, if the plan works, to play through through Tony Crows, who's obviously equally good passer but less mobile. Yeah. And then you leave Phillips to deal with him, and then hopefully Germany aren't going to have those so those those spells of possession. They're going to you're going to blunt their attacking impetus. I mount to me seems ideal for that role. He's done it before. He's done it for Chelsea. He'll also give you something attacking if you need it. But that I is don't know. that's that, a big call. That's but, if you don't go to a back three. Okay, so let's imagine this. So we think if he does go to a back three, it is to match uh, Germany's yeah. three four three. We do. Do we assume Walker will be the third central defender? I think so. So we've had Pickford in goal, and we're purely projecting here. You can laugh at us if we get these predictions wrong. So we're thinking Walker, Stones, Maguire. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so one question in that, Stone's in the middle of the three, I yeah. presume, right? Okay. At that point, you have a call to make with your wing backs. Because were it up to me, I'd go with Reese James and Ben Chilwell. But it's not up to me because... But you can't have Ben Chilwell cannot play. He had been okay. self-isolating oh, yeah. oh, and he had, not played, yes. he had not played at I all. I the mystery self-isolation rules and the fact he hasn't played at all. He can't play. Sorry. So like, that's right. Luke Shaw, yeah. yeah. And then on the right, I would assume he might lean Trippier for his delivery because that seems to be so important to him over Reese James. I'd go James, but Trippier, yeah? I would have gone Trippier. Okay, there you go. So you think No, no, but there? before the Czech Republic game, and then when I saw that Reese James was playing that, Re that Czech Republic game, making it two and two, right. I'm thinking that maybe Reese James is ahead. And I really hope, really hope that Sadgate sees the light and start Reese James. Okay. Uh, in front, we assume Declan Rice again. Yeah, double pivot, you know. He's not going to go Rice Henderson. That would be... He would go Rice and Phillips every day because that's okay. the conservative guy. Where's my sexy football? <laughs> Jordan Henderson out of the picture, right? Captain Courageous back, whatever. But you don't, you don't think he's going to... I don't think... He's going to stick to what's worked for him so far. Yeah, I so would like Henderson Rice... to start with either Rice or Phillips, but I don't think he would. Okay, so if you go Rice and Phillips then all of a sudden, you only have three spots left in your team. Mm -hmm. One is going to go to Harry Kane, center yeah. forward. There's no argument there. Of course. We can debate whether, we'll debate after the fact whether it's the right choice or not. But then you only have two spots left. Well, one, because Raheem Sterling has one guaranteed. Because you scored, because you scored yeah. two goals in three games. Because he loves him. Okay. So, it's only one left for basically Foden, Grealish, Sancho, Saka. I, Potentially, <laughs> Henderson, if you want to play with... I, Sorry, you know, with a with a three five two. Think of what you're saying. I hope your lineup is wrong. Yeah. Because Me too. that would mean Me too. that you've the position in which you're strongest 
Yep. Attacking midfield, stroke wingers. Mm. You've concocted a lineup where basically you have as few of them as possible on the pitch. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah. And that's why I really hope, I really hope he doesn't play that three at the back. And I really hope he goes 4 3 3 attacking because this is a team that if you attack them, exactly. they could crumble. But because it's Gary Southgate, and I think because he's the most conservative head coach, that, well, one of the most that we've seen in this tournament, I'm, I really fear these three at the back. I've got it somewhere in my head. I know they've tried their training. And I just think that is what we could be seeing. Luke Shaw, more suited to a four. Trippier has played a four. He's played plenty of four. Yeah. He can easily play four. I, I, I'm with you. Uh, I mean, if you don't like Trippier, then if you want to be a little more conservative, play Walker right back. You're not putting in any crosses anyway. You're no, putting almost exactly. no crosses in this tournament. You tell them not to go over exactly. the halfway line. So. If, but yeah, I, I agree with you. I'd like to see something more positive. Oh, come on. I'd like to see 4-3-3. I, even, I, I called it a 4-1-4-1 against Croatia. It seemed yeah. to make more sense to me. Germany. All right. Oof, After the debacle, yeah. do we... I mean, I, I have no idea. He, to me, he's, he's sphinx-like, inscrutable. No, honestly, like, I don't know what goes on in that man's head. If, if England play the back four, now obviously we talked about how the Golsons Kimmich wing back thing works extremely well against, against back fours, yeah. uh, especially with attacking fullbacks. England, whether they play three or four, won't have attacking fullbacks. No. So does he change it? I think that this is, this is the big boys tournament, right? And I just think, again, and we go back to what we've been saying, and it's boring, but Joshua Kimmich cannot be the best holding midfielder in the world and not play holding midfielder in a game like this. I'm sorry, play Ginter right back. I don't care. He's a good defender. I know he's not the quickest, but he's a good defender. He's intelligent. His positioning is usually good. Play him there. Trust Hummers and Rudiger for this game. Come on. And then play Kimmich in midfield in a 4 3 3 where you're going to get the best out of Gundo and Cruz. And you Cruz. play Gosens at left back. And you play Gosens at left back. Even though he's never done that. It doesn't matter. I mean, Atalanta have played a little bit with the back four this season. Yeah, I don't think that often with Gosens. But still, but I think, I think he, can, he can be there. He can do that. But then if you do that, then you run into another problem, which is just a numbers game in midfield. Because if you go 4 3 3, yeah, fine. Kimmich, you've got Kimmich, Gundogan, and um, Kroos. And you have Skoretska. Skoretska is your impact sub. No problem. Bring him on after after an hour. Bring him on after an hour. Gundogan you know, will last an hour. Okay. Gundogan will last an hour. Then you bring Goretzka in. Fine. But then you have... Then you become a very, very narrow team, right? If you go 4-3-3. Three, three. Because I don't know if Muller's coming back into the lineup. Personally, I feel better when he's there. And yeah, no, me too. There. But if we go back to this Muller and Havertz... Um, Gnabry. A Gnabry front three. That was a very central front three, which was fine when you had Kimmich and, yeah, no, and Gossens. But you could still you have attacking fullbacks, even in the four. It's when one point. of them is Ginter? No, but certainly Gossens. Gossens can be quite focused going forwards. Not Ginter I, yeah, so You much. start getting into sophisticated stuff with shifts where know. it's a three. And, and you know he's not going to change. He's going to be a back three anyway. With Kimmich, how right wing yeah, back. I don't think he's going to change. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.